We carry uh, a fungus called Candida albicans in our guts and we carry relatives of that fungus on our skin and in our mouths. And we normally don't have any problem with this fungus and we don't even know that it's there. But once it senses that it's not being um, suppressed properly, then it changes to become these long filaments. And they are really, really tiny. You have to use a microscope to see them. So it's amazing that they can drill down into the tissue underneath them and cause severe damage. And they're strong enough to break through um, all the membranes and everything that, that make up our, our, our tissue. And they cause a lot of damage and they cause a lot of immune response. And that's what people find so irritating if they, if they get thrush because they get a huge amount of inflammation underneath. So these, these little tiny hyphae are the things that cause the real damage in disease. My research is based in three main areas. One is understanding how the molecules control the direction of growth of these uh, hyphae. And then another area is to understand what the hyphae have to do to be able to penetrate our tissue. Because in the future, combinatorial drug therapies are probably going to be the way to go. So we won't be able to just kill an organism with a drug. What we'll do is we'll suppress its growth and at the same time stop it from uh, penetrating tissue. Hyphae can only grow if they can manage their cell wall. So trying to look at all these interlinked uh, cell biology control systems is what we're doing here in my lab. I left school when I was 18 in the days when I think about 5% of people went to university. So going to university wasn't one of the expectations that came across our horizon in those days. I left school with shorthand and typing qualifications and I always knew that I wanted to do something big and I wanted to travel. So I managed to get a job working at a big advertising agency in the middle of London. I gradually worked my way up to being a, a fully competent PA and I was offered a job in New York. When I got married, I, my husband was working uh, in Saudi Arabia and I thought, oh, how exotic. So I was really pleased to go and live there with him and see what it was like. But I had no idea that it was uh, going to be as difficult as it was and I wasn't allowed to leave the house or travel or drive or do anything at all, which in the West we take for granted. And it was a huge wake-up call to me as how most of the women in the world um, do not have the opportunities and the choices that we have here in the West. But it was really when I bought a small holding and uh, I realised that microbiology plays a big role in farming because your livestock are always affected by uh, all kinds of uh, different uh, parasites. So I started to get interested in the idea of identifying these microbes myself. So I asked the local university here in Aberdeen if I could um, access their microscopes. That's when I realized the huge diversity of microbiology and um, I started to get interested in the unseen processes that go on around us and I met a professor at the University of Aberdeen who taught the uh, access course. And he and I exchanged um, advice and um, uh, conversations about microscopy and microbiology. And he suggested to me that, I, as I seem so interested in the subject, I should maybe do a degree. So I started my degree when I was 40, and I graduated with a first class in biochemistry at the age of 44. I hope that I influence some of the new um, graduates straight from school because I knew that I wasn't going to get another chance. And one of them asked me once why I work so hard and I said, there is no way I'm going to look back on this and know that I could have done any better. After my PhD, I started to get ideas about, I was really interested in how the environment impacts microbes. We tend to study microbes for what goes on inside them, but I was interested in how uh, the signals from the outside are translated into what goes on in the inside, because of course microbes don't have eyes, ears and brains like we do. So how are these signals getting transmitted and then um, being uh, expressed as behaviour? 
So I've developed um, a whole bunch of assays including the electric field work that I do and nano fabrication and various other systems that I have to challenge the organisms and see how they respond. So what you can see here is um, our fungus of choice or of, uh, of interest, it's a pathogen, Candida albicans, and what we've done is we've um, attached a green fluorescent protein to the nucleus of the fungus so we're seeing a, a hypha here that can respond to the ridges. These like to follow the contours that they touch. And what you can see here is the nucleus is going to divide and the daughter nucleus goes into the next compartment and that will be the new cell. And so what happens is the hypha gradually grows down into tissue and then it can establish a new colony in the organ underneath, which is quite often the kidney, it creates a big fungal ball and our immune cells infiltrate that tissue. They know there's a problem, but there's very little they can do about it because the fungus has created this fortress of, uh, of cells. And all the immune cells can do is try and fire damaging uh, proteins at it. And that's what causes inflammation and our bodies then react to the inflammation. The Royal Society has helped me in two major ways. First of all, I was awarded a fellowship, which is from five to eight years, and mine will be eight years. It gives you the time to, to develop your skills, but also it gives you the chance to travel and develop a lot of collaborations with other groups around the world. And these people will bring their knowledge and their skills to our research group. And I really enjoy watching people blossom and suddenly understand uh, what it is that we're trying to do in scientific thinking. And the great thing about science is it brings something new every day. And I'm someone who likes new challenges. So science um, brings challenges that don't stop. And so it's, a, it's an ideal um, career for people who like novelty. I look back at my school and that everyone's aspirations were pretty low. I can't believe I've come from there to here. <laughs>